Right. I feel like I'm at home here in my little lounge, but never mind. Okay. It's really sweet. I love it. How are you all doing? Yes? Well, um, it's actually a real honor to be here. Um, I suppose doing what I do, I kind of understand grief. I kind of understand the process of death. And um, I want to talk a bit about this today. Um, a lot of people, if I just give you a, a bit of a background about me. Um, back in the UK, if you couldn't work out by the accent, I am English. I'm not Australian, by the way. Um, but, and I joke, because I do have an American twang. Because um, my son has now lived in America longer than he's been, you know, probably, you know, more than, more than half his life. And, of course, he comes home with that American twang and I pick it up and it makes me sound Australian a little bit. Um, but I have been doing my work as a medium for longer than I care to remember. Um, probably way over 20 years. I know I only look 21, but, you know, it's fine. <laughs> but um, it's been a passion of mine. And I never thought anything of it. Um, I was a singer. I was an entertainer. I was a singer. I did everything. You name it, I have done it. Even down to a nail technician, I have done it. But um, when I fell into, and I will say falling in, when I fell into being a medium, it really kind of rocked my world. And I thought, oh, people are just going to want to know about their life, you know, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, if they're going to stay married, you know, the whole thing. And then I didn't realize how my world was going to change when I started to communicate with those who have crossed over. And it suddenly happened when I'm sitting there and I'm telling this woman about, oh, you know, your husband was actually cheating on her. Oh, my God. Um, but I said, oh, your husband's cheating on you, blah, 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 blah. And I went, is your father dead? She went, yes. I went, oh, oh. Why am I seeing him? And it kind of really freaked me out, as I suppose it would. And um, she said, but my dad wouldn't know about my husband. I said, well, he's telling me a lot of the information. And it all came about that, um, that her father had passed from a heart attack and it was very hard and, and you know, she was, she was more interested, not about her husband, but about her father. And I said, but don't you want to know about who he's cheating on you with? And she said, oh, I know it's my best friend. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, really. I went, OK. And it was really interesting because what then happened is she opened my eyes into the fact that some people don't just care about their life. They care about those people who have crossed over. And back in my young, naive days of being 21 when I did that reading, um, it was really quite shocking how she just said, I just want to know if he's OK. And I went, huh. Now, it was a fairly new concept for me, because at that point, I'd only really lost my grandmother. Uh, no, my grandfather at that point. I'd only really lost my grandfather. And my grandmother had gone, but I was OK with her. You know, I, I'd got closure and everything else. And I hadn't really had these many deaths. Now, obviously, 20 years later, I'm probably the only one still standing in my life, in my family. Um, you know, my grandparents have gone. I've lost a best friend. I've lost a boyfriend. I've lost, you know, a lot of people. And I think being working in a, as a medium has kind of helped me understand my process. And what's, I didn't realize how important that connection was to the other side. And there was me thinking in my own little naive head, oh, people just want to know about their boyfriends and girlfriends and where their career's going. Because I suppose in my mind at that period of time in my life, that's what I wanted to know about. But then I also realized that people want to know that their loved ones are OK. And so when Merv Griffin said to me, hey, I'm going to create a TV show around you, I went, OK. Now, bearing in mind, I had no idea who Merv Griffin was. Um, yeah, I know you laugh. <laughs> I had 
no idea who Merv Griffin was. And I remember his assistant saying, you don't know who Merv is? I went, no. And she said, Google him. I went, oh, well, I, live, I was in LA. You know, everybody in LA is a producer, some form of director, some wannabe actress. I just thought he was another wannabe. How wrong was I? <laughs> Clearly I was not having a psychic moment. Um, I, know, I really should have tapped in on that one. Um, but he actually said to me, he said, I'm going to make you a medium. I went, well, I already am a medium. And we made a joke about being medium or large or small, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> At the time, I was rather, rather large. And I said, I think it should be a large. And he's like, oh, we joked about it. Um, but what was interesting is he said that people want this. And I didn't understand it. And whilst I'm known for many other things, and I'm known for a lot of things, um, I'm predominantly now known over the TV show and everything else as a medium. And so for those of you who don't know what that is, I have that con connection to the other side. And later on in my workshop, I will actually be doing readings and messages. But I want to try and help you understand where they are, what, they do, what, they, what do they do all day? <laughs> Do they watch you in the shower? You know? Are you sitting on the toilet and they're watching you, you know? That sort of stuff. Trust me, I get answers all sorts. But it's so true. And that was, that was one of the reasons why I wrote my book, Survival of the Soul, because a lot of people said, what do they do all day? And I went, OK, so that's why I wrote it. But I want to try and help you understand what they do. Are they watching you? The answer is yes. Sorry, they are. Not all the time, though, I hope. Um, there is an unwritten rule that they don't see everything. Um, and, that, and that really how to help you see the signs yourself. So first things first, how many of you have ever experienced a medium before? OK. How many of you have had a private reading with a, a medium? A one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, good. All right. Let me explain what a medium is for those of you who have not had this experience. We are able to connect with your loved ones by using our five senses. Our hearing, our seeing, our sight, our touch, and our taste. We also use that extra sixth sense as our knowing, that sense of knowing. And it's in that space of using for, one, for what I call six senses, we get information. It doesn't matter what language that loved one speaks. If they speak Punjabi, trust me, I will understand Punjabi. Well, I won't, but they'll give it to me in English or in a way that I understand it. If they speak Spanish, I will get the information. And so therefore, like this morning, I was doing a reading back to Germany. I do not speak a word of German. But their loved ones were showing me and giving me images, almost like they were using hand signals about how, to, how they would get information to me. And so um, I just want to put some myths, put them away, you know, sort of like hide some myths, really. And... <clears throat> You can communicate. You don't need me. I'm doing myself out of a job right now, OK? You do not need me to connect with your loved ones. Now, a lot of people will say, but I don't see them like you see them. Well, I don't see my loved ones like I see your loved ones. And you know what? That drives me insane. My best friend died, died uh, four years ago. In fact, four years ago, this, five years ago this month. And your best friend is someone who you go to for everything. I mean, everything. There were things I discussed with her that I did not go to my parents about. Or I never went to my mom about, I never went to my husband at the time about. And so when I lost her, such a sudden passing, even though she had cancer, but such a, she just went downhill so quickly. I lost my right arm. And so now I'm like, Elaine, where are you? And I hear, I'm here. I'm like, but where? You're dry, I can't see you. Yet if your loved one comes up, I'm like, hey, dude, how are you? And I can talk to him. 
And I'll see him, and it drives me insane because I can't do the same back. So I know how frustrating it is for you to go, is that a sign? And question. And question if you're going insane because you're hearing voices. Or you're having a crazy dream and your loved one's in there. I know what it's like. How many of you have had dreams with your loved ones? Yay! How many of you woke up and went, oh my god, that was crazy? <laughs> yeah, me too. But you didn't, and you didn't want to believe it, did you? You didn't want to believe it, or you kind of wanted to believe it, but then you got sad, and then you got, you know. And so really, we've got to realize that that loved one is trying to connect with you. They sometimes don't want to connect with me. And the reason why they don't want to connect with you is because you have the special relationship. I'm just a third party. I'm just the person, the facilitator. And so, you know, our signs are all around us. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a breakdown about the afterlife. I'm going to give you an idea about where the afterlife is. So, I want you to all put your hands out to the side or in front of you. Arm stretch. Okay. Wiggle your fingers. Now, where you're wiggling your fingers is where the afterlife is. Okay? Reality. You're, the afterlife is approximately a three foot distance away from our body. It's not far away. But it's in a different dimension. And so we see three foot, we see the end of our fingers and we see everything around us. We don't consider that there is an energetic world at the end of our fingertips. Because that's what it is. It's an energetic world that's at the end of our fingertips. Because what happens when we come out of this physical body that has either failed us or, or caused us harm or whatever, when our soul comes out, we're energy. Let me put this to you. How many of you have hugged a tree? I'll own to this one. I'll own this one. How many of you have sat by water and felt refreshed? You've sat and had the breeze in your face and you felt amazing. Yeah. It's energy. It's just energy. How many of you have walked into a room and gone, oh, I don't like you? <laughs> That's energy too. A shame it is, but it's energy. So we've got the good and the bad. Now, I always work in the light, all right? I always work with the good energy. So I don't worry about getting bad energy. And this is what I want to just put this right down right now, is just because of what I'm talking about doesn't mean you're going to attract the, ooh, the bad spirits, okay? Because if your mind is of a positive nature, you are only going to attract the positivity. And my grandmother put it to me, who was also a medium. She said, Lisa, why be scared of those people who are no longer with us when they would never hurt you in life? So they're not going to hurt you in their passing. I went, huh, okay. And that's what's kept me going. And so our, when we come out of our body, our energy rises. So I want to just do a quick, I know I'm supposed to be talking, but I get people to do exercises because otherwise it's just after lunch and you get into that food coma and you want to fall asleep. You know? And that's when I have to come around and prod you and go, wake up. And you go, oh my God. Um, so, what I want you to do is I just want you to sit comfortably and I want you to really feel the seat that you're sitting on. I want you to really be aware of the seat that you're sitting on and how you're sitting. And, you know, whether it's supporting your back. I want you to just be really, really conscious. Now, in a moment, I'm going to tell you that you are going to completely tense your whole body up. You're not going to do it yet. Now, the most important thing while you do this is to breathe. Because what happens is when we tense something up, we go, and you, okay? So you must breathe. All right. So I want you to tense every muscle in your body, if you can. You don't have to do this exercise if you're worried about it. 
I want you to tense every muscle in your body right now. Every muscle, even your face if you want to screw it up. It's fine. It's only me who can see you. But breathe. Keep breathing. All right? Hold that muscle. Hold it. Hold it really tight. Hold it really tight. Really, really. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Come on. All right. Ready? You're going to let it go. Keep breathing. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Let go. How free did that feel? It felt really good, didn't it? Ah. Oh. When we escape our body, we feel that freedom that you have just experienced. But we feel that freedom in a way that is probably magnitude by about a thousand. How do I know that? Because I've had a near-death experience. So I know what it's like. That feeling of coming out of your body, which actually you come out at an angle. You don't go up into the heavens. You go out at an angle. Is unbelievable. The love that you experience in that moment of time is incredible. Because what it does is you feel all of this love. You are embraced. And yes, you're greeted by your loved ones. You are greeted by those who you love. Be it your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, your aunt, your uncle, your grandparents, your best friend, the dog. Yes, the dog. You gotta bring the animals in. Because aren't they our furry little kids? Can I tell you a funny story about my dog? <gasps> I feel such a bad mother. Oh my God. So Lucy, I will come back to dogs in a, this in a minute, but Lucy's got this long tail, fluffy tail, beautiful, long. I mean, she's got hair like me, right? But it's long and beautiful and white. It's gorgeous. Well, she wasn't feeling very well yesterday morning. And she's lying on the floor. Well, I'm a clean freak. I mean, a clean freak. So I'm hoovering and vacuuming. Up. I'm like, Lucy, you've got to move. And she's like, I'm not moving. So, of course, I vacuum around her. La, la, la. She moved. And her tail got caught in the vacuum. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm such a bad mother. And I wasn't that close to her. She swished her ass like this. And I went, <gasps> And I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Needless to say, she lost a little bit of hair. She's okay. <laughs> I know. And in, in that whole moment, I was going, don't have a heart attack right now, please. <laughs> oh my god, she's such good. And, and do you know what she did? She, our animals love us unconditionally. I picked her up and loved her. And she threw herself into my neck and ki licked my le neck. Almost as if to say, it's okay, mommy. It's okay. Accidents happen. Oh, I was like, evil mother. But anyway, <laughs> just had to like, add that. But, <clears throat> but our pets also greet us. Our pets also greet us. And so what we do is we have this communication with our loved ones. And they are literally there. They will, when I had my near-death experience, I had this long conversation with my grandmother. I did not want to come back to the earth. I was in so much pain, I, I just didn't want to do it. And so when she said, no, Lisa, you've got to go back. You've got so much work to do. Charlie needs a mother. I'm like, Charlie's fine. He's probably got a better mother than my mother. It's OK. But no, I got shipped back, and here I am. But what was interesting is in that period of time, I, everything slowed down. Everything in that space and time slowed down. I was talking to my grandmother for what felt like half an hour. But actually, I was only talking to her, or I was in that space of the afterlife, in our world, in our time zone, for about a minute. So everything just slowed down. It was incredible. Or quickened up, however you want to look at it. But it was amazing. And so when I saw it, it was like, wow. And it was so profound. It was so, so, so profound. And I, I experienced this beautiful love, this wonderful uh, sort of soul fulfillment of love. And that is what your loved ones experience 
and they live that. Imagine that. Imagine that we're all going to meet our loved ones again. Some of us don't want to. Yeah, some people we don't want to. But most of us, we want to meet those people again. We want to experience that love. And people say to me, how do we hug? How do I embrace my loved one? Well, have you ever felt like, you know, you're standing in line at Starbucks or something and you felt someone come into your energy and you've gone, ooh. Have you ever done that? And you've looked behind and they're like, here. <laughs> Really, dude, do you want to just take a step back? But you've felt it, haven't you? It's like that, ooh. So that shuddering, that feeling of someone coming into your personal space is exactly how they feel, or it feels. But again, quantify that. And put love into that, this familiar love. Oh, it's amazing. And it's almost like this soul connection, because when you're in the soul space, it's amazing. And so the afterlife is all around us. There are various different levels of the afterlife. There's various different layers of the afterlife. We are constantly communicating with them. So let's look at the communication. How do we talk? How do we communicate? See, you're not communicating now. Your mouths. You communicate through talking. All right. Now, what happens when we've got that situation, when we are in that space and time? And when we're in that space and time and we are sitting there and we are not communicating, but we are sitting with somebody else just being in that space. Have you ever sat with someone else and just been in that space? And it's comfortable, isn't it? Now, have you ever had a situation where you thought at something and they have answered you verbally? Okay? It's freaky, isn't it? It's like, oh my God. Happened to it with my ex-husband and I. I was, I was in the lounge and he was in the bath. We were in a hotel in, in Ireland. And I thought, oh my God, it would be so nice if I could get in that bath right now and he would hurry up. That's what I thought. Literally within seconds of me thinking that, he said, hey, I'm coming out in a minute. I'll refill it for you. I know you want a bath. What? My boyfriend now will say to me, you think very loud. Because <laughs> he's a big skeptic. He doesn't believe. This is a guy who's served 20 years in the army and still serving and has seen a lot of deaths. So, of course, he's, um, he's not of the same mindset as me, actually. But he goes, you think very loud. And, but it's being in that space of just comfort. And then there's the other thing where we can communicate. We can do sign language. Have you ever been silent all day? Has any of you ever been silent all day? OK. Seven times? Seven days. Seven, seven days. Did you do um, like a retreat? Yeah. It's the most powerful thing that you can do. But people look at you like you're weird. What do you mean you can't speak? Now, if you can do this, what I'm, I'm showing you is I'm showing you different ways of how loved ones communicate. We communicate by verbal actions, you know, communication, we, and sound. We communicate by showing images. We communicate by pictures. Actually, I was just reaching into my, my, um, my bag to get my phone. We've all got one of these things, or most of us have. And if you haven't, I want to know why. Um, but, for instance, we can all communicate. We inter I better not show that one. But we all communicate by pictures. You know, there are pictures on our cell phones that we often get out and we, we show our friends and our family our pictures, don't we? And we go, oh my gosh. So we communicate through all of these ways. So we have an easy way because we're a physical form. But how does energy communicate? It's an interesting one, isn't it? And that is when we have to become the energetic form ourselves. So go back to sitting on your chair and feeling the chair underneath you. Now I want you to bring your attention down into your stomach and really kind of feel who you are. Who you are in the core of you. 
whether or not we all like ourselves deep down. Get past all the ego, you know, I don't like my hair, I don't like my nose, I've got fat hips, you know, whatever it is. Get to the core of you, of whether you're a good person. What you like about yourself. And when you can connect to your core, you're connecting to the energy. Has anyone ever done yoga? Down dog, you know, all of that. I won't do yoga here. I do a lot of yoga. But yoga helps you connect with yourself. But the primary thing in yoga is your breath. And so what is going to help you connect to your, your um, yourself is your breath. So we're going to do it here. All right, again, trying to get you over that lull of lunchtime. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to just breathe deeply. You can close your eyes if you want, but breathe deeply. Really focus on your breath and bring your breath right down to the core center, to right into that space and feel that space. And that space is you. That's your values, your self-worth, everything about you. It's who you are as a soul. Now, when you can connect to your soul, you can now connect to others. So now what I want you to do is I want you just to think about maybe a particular person that you would like to have a message from or a sign from from the other side. And I don't want you to think about what the sign is, but I want you to think about the person. And I want you to ask them to come forward right now. You only have to say their name. And now I want you to ask them for something that is a significant sign for you when they come forward. And I want you to go with the first thing that comes into your head. It could be a word, it could be a significant image. The first thing. Okay, now come back to me. And breathe. All right, now, does anyone want to share what they had as a sign? Did anyone have anything, something really obscure? Yes? It was just my mum's smile. Your mum's smile? Light up a room. Light up a room. Okay, so you saw your mum's smile. Let me just go with this. Do you ever see anybody that resembles your mum? Do you ever look in, in a crowded room and go, oh my gosh, they, they have a smile like my mum? No. You don't. So the significance of what you've just said to me is a smile that could light up the room. All right? So there's got to be something in that that is going to be a sign for you. And it could be the fact that a light may come on suddenly in the room. Think about that. Anybody else want to share a sign? That, okay, yes. Car headlights. Car headlights. There's your sign because that's a light up. Did you see how that worked? All right, you're not with me on this one, okay. <laughs> I got all excited. I'm just trying to make it fit. No, actually, I'm really not. But car headlights, do you ever... So when you see car headlights shine up, I bet you that later on you'll be walking to your car. Have you ever had it where you've walked past the car and someone, someone, suddenly their headlights have come on? Watch for that. Watch for the car headlights. You may also get something very similar to that because it's come together. Anybody else? A shamrock. So, we're nowhere near St. Patrick's Day, obviously. So you could be walking along and someone may say the word shamrock or someone may show a picture of it to you or there might be a significance to St. Patrick's Day or you might walk past an Irish bar and there's a, that. And that will be a sign. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to find it. Okay, anyone else? Sunshine. Sunshine. Now that could, I'm just giving you an idea of how they're communicating with us. That could be down to a, someone's, ch a child's drawing of the sunshine, you know, with the happy face and, 
you know, even that. Okay, so look out for something, or it could be the fact, hey, someone will go, hey, sunshine, and you hear it go, <gasps> All right, anybody else want to share? Yes? A bubble, a bubble explosion. Okay, so think about this. You could look on Facebook or Twitter, and someone might have an image of the bubbles flying, or it could be kids in the street blowing those bubbles. Right. See how I'm making you see how the signs are? Okay, anyone else? Yes? Your husband's dog. What's your husband's dog's name? Bubba. Bubba. So you may hear someone say Bubba. You may see the dog. You may see something like the dog. But some capacity, you may even see an image of Bubba Gump. That's what went through my head as soon as you said that. I saw Bubba Gump. So you may see something along those lines. Do you see how I'm making you work it out? And I can guarantee within the next 48 hours, you're going to see, every single one of you will see that sign. I can guarantee it. And let me tell you what happened. I was doing this, I, I, did, I did a much longer meditation, which we'll do in the workshop. And I made the loved ones see, I made um, my, my group see their loved ones. And it was so powerful, it was amazing. And the, I, again, I did the same exercise. And they said, but I'm seeing boxing gloves. Where am I going to see boxing gloves? And at that time I went, yeah, good question. <laughs> OK. Didn't think anything of it. And it was really funny because you know, I carried on, carried on. And I said, within the next three hours, you'll see the sign. Anyway, the woman behind her tapped her on the shoulder, I don't know, a couple of hours later and said, hey, can you get my keys for me? They've just fallen underneath your seat. So she picked them up and guess what the key ring was? Yes, boxing gloves. And that was the sign from her mum. No, it was the sign from her son. And then, she went, and then another guy... And I did this in Quebec. They couldn't speak a word of English. Try imagine me doing this in English. I mean, that was like, Mwah. anyway. Thank God they all had those translation headphones. He came up to me. He's like, but Lisa, I don't know where I'm going to see a blue butterfly. And I'm like, no, me neither. <laughs> where are you going to find a blue butterfly in November? <laughs> you know, it's like, really? So I broke them out into doing their exercises. And eventually, I said, you need a pen and paper. So, of course, they went off and got their pen. He didn't have one. He's like, Lisa, I don't know where I'm going to get a, blue pe a, a piece of paper from. And I said, well, someone will lend you one. And this woman goes, D -d 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 -d, you know, in French, as they do, and handed him a piece of paper. All around the edge were blue butterflies. Crazy, but awesome. Love it. So, your loved ones will give you the signs. Now, let's look at this. Um, we have our six senses, so we have to think about how we're going to communicate with our loved ones. So let's look at these. I want to run down. How many of you see repeating numbers like 1111? 11? Do you? Yeah? 1111. 11. How many of you see like twos, 222? Two Threes, 333. Three. They're repeating numbers, aren't they? Now, this is a significant sign from our loved ones. Now, they're not naturally going to do this. They're not just going to draw the 311 on there, because my number is 311. But they're not going to draw 311 or 1111 on there. But what they're going to do is influence you to look at the clock at that time. You know, to put on your mobile phone and see that sign. Now, the other thing is how many of you see pennies on the floor? Oh, how many of you pick them up? Good. <laughs> Do you ever look at the date? Look at the date. I remember being in Hawaii. Hawaii, remember that. And I'm having a pretty bad time. And I'm turned to my granddad and I'm like, granddad? Because my granddad was like my father. I need some help here. Come on, you've got to give me a sign that you're with me. And I walk out on stage to go and speak to 2,000 people, you know, and do what I do. And I come back to my dressing room, 
<clears throat> and I open, go to open the door and I stop in my tracks. Remember, I'm in Hawaii. And there's this piece of plastic, you know, with my name in there. And a penny dropped. An English penny, no less. I'm in Hawaii, okay. With the date, 1973, that is my year I was born. So I went, oh, thank you. But it was so incredible to see. So I'm actually going to say to you, look at the date. And I did it with a lady. She'd lost her son, sadly. And um, she couldn't get over her son. And she said, I keep finding pennies everywhere. I went, are you saving them? She said, yes. Anyway, we went out and we were, fil we were doing some filming. We walked out and we came back. And there was a penny sitting on that table where we had been sitting. No one had been in that room. And she went, oh my god, there's a penny. And I said, look at the date. She's like, 2012? That doesn't mean anything. I went, did he die in 2012? No, it was 2013. I'm like, you know, scratching my head going, Argh, trying to make it fit. And then I added up the numbers. Two, three, uh, two, one, and a three, which is six. I said, what's the significance of six? And then I heard six days. I said, what's the significance of six days? She went, oh, it's his birthday in six days. So I'm trying to give you some examples of how we look for these signs, but also how sometimes you have to go that step further. You know, we can, we can say, oh, 19, you know, 2013, 2012. It may not have a resim some connection. But what it could be is add those dates up, add those numbers up. So that's another example. Music. How many of you hear music? OK. I cannot tell you. I, I used to be a singer. And I cannot tell you how many times at the end of my shows I sing. And I cannot tell you how many times I look into the audience at that period of time and everyone is crying because of the song I sing. And the song I sing is My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. And that is a song that relates to many people who have lost someone. It happens. But you could be walking along. My sign, my song is Barbara Streisand, The Way We Were. Okay? Memories and the way we were. I sang those at my grandfather's funeral. So I'm walking along, la 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 la. I'm in like somewhere like Forever 21. All right, you don't expect to hear that song. You don't. All right. La 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 la. I hear a remix, a dance version of someone singing that song. Have we got any kids in the audience? I go, holy shit, at that time. <laughs> Sorry, just have to bring it out there. I do. I go, holy shit. Oh my God, you know? But you have to think about that space and time, what, it, what you're doing. Those times where we see sparkles at the corner of your eyes. Have you ever looked at and you've seen corner, sparkles at the corner of your eyes? Yes? It's energy. All you're doing is seeing them. Let me tell you something. How many of you want to see your loved ones in physical materialization? You physically want them to stand right in front of you like that. OK. Can I tell you what will happen in reality if that happens? <laughs> Shit will not be the word that comes out your mouth. You will drop that F-bomb. <laughs> you will. 
The F-bomb will come out loud and proud. <laughs> and you'll go, oh my God. And it's in that space and time that your brain goes, that shouldn't happen. Because it's in a split second. Your brain will go, that's wrong. Okay? And then you'll do that, then you'll do that double take, and then they'll be gone. And the reason is, for that materialization, that physical manifestation, for a loved one to come through like that, takes an incredible amount of energy. And if we talk about energy, imagine the amount of energy that it takes to light up a football stadium. It takes a lot of energy. They can't hold that energy long. So they go, ping, ping, and they've gone. Where you have thought, oh my God, I've seen my loved one. But your brain naturally goes, it's wrong. And so you look away and you, you know, the F-bomb comes out of your mouth. And then you go, oh, and then you're really sad because they're no longer there. And actually, if you'd have gone, oh, I love you, that would have been great, wouldn't it? Reality is it's not going to happen because your brain is going, but that's wrong. Even me, when my grandmother materialized in front of me, guess what I did? I ran. I went, oh my God, go away, Nana, I can't cope with it. I see dead people all the time. But I went, oh my God, I can't cope. And I turned, and then I went, but Lisa, it's just your grandmother. And I went, oh, oh, where have you gone? Because the energy wasn't there for her to maintain it. And so what happens in that space and time, they come back and go, gooey, and then they go. So we have to look for signs. We have to listen. How many of you talk to your loved ones in the shower? Okay, with a medium, I will then be able to tell you what brand of shampoo that you use. <laughs> Let me tell you why. It's because the moment that you ask your loved ones to come forward, they are there. Maybe you'll all start questioning when you ask them now to come through. <laughs> like, oh my God, no! But they do. That's the reason why I know that you'll see those signs at some point in the next couple of days. Because you ask them to come forward. And I'll do that exercise more deeply in the workshop, but it's so powerful. So our loved ones can show us the signs. Now, do you think that they're gonna drop that penny from heaven? Do you think all of a sudden it's gonna start raining pennies? No. They're not just gonna go, oh, shh and hide <laughs> and watch. What they're gonna do is they're influencing you to walk by and look. And that influence is them going, you need to look at this. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? So now I've said all of this, how many of you see signs from their loved ones, from your loved ones? All of you, majority of you have got your hands up. Those of you who haven't are probably going, well, maybe-ish. How many of you have questioned whether they're signs? Okay, let me tell you. When you question, I sometimes question. Oh my God, I am the queen of signs. I'm like, give me a sign, give me a sign. I'm a nightmare. I'm an absolute nightmare. When we question, that it's a sign, and you go, oh, that's a sign from my mum. Oh, is it? Is it? Is that butterfly a sign? Oh, really? Because our own constant, conscious head goes, no. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. Now, I'm going to just tell you an absolute fact. We have a few gentlemen in here. But majority are women in here. 
the diff there's a significant difference between man and woman. The man, black and white, boom, it's fact. They think. Everything is very action orientated. All right, you do get some men that are very, very sensitive that will pick up on the emotion. But majority of men are fact-based. Their action. The way that they show their appreciation and love is by doing things. That's why the man opens the door. Well, they should. I have an old-fashioned gentleman. Thank you very much. You know, so I'm very lucky. But that's the way he shows how he feels. By putting little Twix bars in my luggage, because he knows I'm a Twix fiend. I know, oh, how cute is that? Sickening, really. But anyway, he's a sweetheart, this big army guy, you know, doing little things. But it's really endearing. But as women, we are emotional creatures. We are, ugh. We are goo. We are gooey, we are, mm, and all of that. Which is a pain in the ass sometimes. <laughs> Don't you think? And then we get into our heads and we start analysing it. Oh, we do this. We, we look at the text message and go, what does this mean? <laughs> you know I'm right. Men don't understand this because they go, oh. And we go, hey, how are you? Right? And women go, well, what does that mean? Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Right? Men go... Hi, how are you? I'm great, thanks, how are you? Us women go, there could be 20 different ways we could read this text. <laughs> you know I'm right, because you're all laughing, okay? We have to take it at face value. Let's become a man for a little while, all right? Let's be in the man zone. I'm great, how are you? Because when we analyze and we overanalyze, we lose sight of these feelings, this gooey gushiness. And this gooey gushiness is what actually is going to help us connect to the other side. And so reality is, is that moment when we feel that presence. That moment when we know that they are there. That moment that we're hearing voices and we're not really going crazy and we don't need to be checking into the local mental institution. Those moments... In fact, it's funny because I, have I have a see a lot of schizophrenic or people who have been diagnosed with it. And I don't believe that they are. I believe that they have mediumship qualities and they've just suppressed it. And um, I know I've spoken about my boyfriend a bit, but he's actually a clinician. He's actually a, um, a clinician, so he's a therapist. And we've spoken about this on many times. But it's interesting how people think about these voices in their head and they think it's wrong. Because they think too much. What we have to do is stop analysing. And then that space and time, when we see a sign and we have to go, oh, I'm seeing a butterfly. Did anyone have a sign as a butterfly by anyone? Yeah, there you go, there's your sign, okay? So, I'm seeing a butterfly. Alright? And, oh my god, that's, that's my mum. And then your brain goes, but is it? Am I just really seeing a butterfly? So we have to stop being the woman, right, sorry guys, you don't have to be a woman, you, you're cool as you are. Um, but you, we have to almost stop being the woman and feeling and, going, and then going, oh my God, but what does it mean? Sometimes it just means that they're there. I have so many, so many clients who come to me and go, I keep seeing this, what does it mean? And one of them was a cowboy hat. Does anybody have a cowboy hat as a sign or a hat as a sign? There you go. For some reason, I just saw it, and I was like, oh, it's a sign for someone. Um, so, I keep seeing this cowboy hat. Okay. Well, my dad was a cowboy, and I've got his cowboy hat, but why do I keep seeing it? What is he trying to tell me? Maybe, hello? <laughs> hey, I'm okay. It doesn't mean that they're trying to tell you anything. Yes, five minutes, okay. They, they're not trying to tell you anything. I'm um, See, I'm having such a great time doing this. I've just lost track of the time. But they're not trying to tell you anything. What they're trying to do is they're trying to show you. Does that make sense? 
And so how many of you doubted those signs that you were getting? Okay. And how many of you believe now the signs that you're getting are real? Yes, I've done my job. <laughs> so what we have to do is we have to realize that not... Yeah, ladies, stop overanalyzing texts, emails, everything else that you read. Um, but we have to stop overanalyzing and going in here and living from here. Because the reality is, is when we see, hear, feel, sense, taste, know that spirit is around us and our loved ones are around us. They really are. It could be that moment. I'll just give you some quick ones before I finish. It could be that moment where you smell your mum's perfume. You taste coffee that your dad used to drink. You hear the piece of music that is important to your son. You see someone who resembles your, your friend. You hear, randomly as you're walking along, their name. I just heard Jack then. I don't know whether that relates to anyone. You all of a sudden just think, grab it, go into the closet, and you grab anything because you need to put it on, and it's their top or their clothes. Or you grab something that was their favorite item. What you are doing is you are connecting. And that connection is so powerful. And so when you know that you have that connection, just by taking a moment, breathing, checking in, and becoming a spiritual and energetic being, then you can connect with anyone. It's like when that phone rings and you automatically go, oh, that's my son, or that's my brother, or that's someone. You know who that person is, don't you? It's because you're connecting with them. It's like this little underground network of souls. That's how I look at it. And so our loved ones are trying to get through. So hopefully you've had some understanding of how it works. Hopefully I've educated Hopefully we've had, you've had some fun. And the other thing is, people say to me, Lisa, you talk about death all the time, I might, yeah, and they say, you have fun. And I go, you know what I do? Because I know that our loved ones don't want us to be unhappy. They want us to continue on with our life, like they continue on with their life without their physical being. So I ensure that we have fun. I've made you guys laugh today. But it means that sometimes you have to have a laugh. You have to remember the good times and the fun times. You have to laugh with them. Those are important moments. And so just remember they are watching out for you. Look for the signs. And it's that moment where you do go, Ugh, is that a sign? It really is a sign that they're coming through. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. <laughs>